Fix Lair here and what if I told you that what you just heard wasn't actually my Buchla but rather your Buchla. Now Felix, I don't have a Buchla system you say? Well, now you do, at least if you want, because I rebuilt my Buchla entirely in VCV Rack, which is a free software, using only free modules. Um, so if you just download this patch file, you're going to be uh, able to use this instrument immediately. And I'm actually a bit proud because uh, I was able to recreate at least my workflow with the Bugler in here uh, very accurately. In my opinion, it sounds much better than the commercially available Arturia plugin uh, because there were some aspects uh, where I wasn't happy with it. And here you have, of course, also even much more possibility than on the actual ESA command because you can just take an oscillator, duplicate it, uh, triple it. Uh, you can have 10 sequencers and uh, all of that would cost you a fortune on the actual Bugler. And I was really surprised at how good it sounded and how much fun it is. Uh, so let's not waste any more time and let's go. All right, so here we have it and uh, this is now a scaled down version. That's uh, the easiest possible version of this. Um, but of course you could and should maybe start duplicating oscillators and start duplicating uh, low pass gates and whatever in order to make this much more fun and give you much more possibilities. But this is the most basic version and this is what it sounds like right now. So what do we have here? One oscillator, another one, two elements for wave folding, a sequencer, an envelope, three low pass gates, a bit of randomness and everything going into a mixer and a spring reverb, which is also essential for the aesthetic. And then here we have a scope if you want to look at some of the waveforms and some utility stuff. Maybe let's have a listen at some other uh, patches that I did here before we start reconstructing this one. And here you can see, of course, here we have more uh, sequencers, more low pass gates, more uh, oscillators added, and I'm mixing them all here in this mixer section. This one's also lovely. Yeah, you get the idea. But now let's go to the demo again and now let's uh, start basically scrapping everything and starting from scratch again i think i'm gonna leave the scope here all right what we have now is uh, basically just standard modules from the internal collection here and what we're now going to do is we're going to work our way from this midi section here where i can just press notes on a keyboard and it's going to convert it into um, voltage per octave signals or gate signals or velocity or whatever um, this MIDI information and then we can use it to trigger stuff and then uh, it's going to do some magic and eventually end up here in this audio um, output module which is going to uh, let us hear the sound and uh, the first thing that we're going to need is a dual pulsar and here I'm using the NUSI uh, is the programmer of this uh, collection of uh, modules and we're going to use a lot of them. So obviously most of the credit here goes to the amazing people that build all these modules. Um, but I'm still super happy with how uh, I was able to assemble it for myself. <laughs> so what is a pulsar? A pulsar is basically a clock generator. I think you can also uh, make it very fast and it's going to be in self-cycling mode working like an oscillator but for this purpose we're going to use it like a clock and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the gate signal here put it into the trigger and now we could trigger it with the keyboard and you can depending on how you connect these models uh, modules you can also of course send in traditional midi notes but for now i'm just gonna uh, connect it like this and then add the next module which in this case um, is gonna be the sequencer this also the exact sequencer basically as on the easel command a music easel it has five steps but here it's a dual five step sequencer just like the pulsar we get two of them in one so this is already more possibilities than the uh, og easel command then for our oscillator i'm going to pick this one uh, by dbis which is basically a replica of the verbos harmonic oscillator which in turn is a very buchler inspired oscillator um, so it works really well here and it also has more possibilities than the actual Buchler oscillator because you have these uh, harmonic controls here where you can um, 
shape the sound much more precisely than just with wave folding. So first of all, if I would uh, just put this here in the output directly, we should hear a sine wave. And that's exactly the case. Uh, and if we put it in the scope, we should see it. And we should also see it change pitch, exactly. Uh, but that's now fairly boring, so we'll just leave it here for now and uh, look for the next module, which is the dual low pass gate. And this is the one by uh, Nusi, but I didn't achieve the results that I wanted with this. So um, the one that I went for in the end is this one, the poly. Uh, LPG, which uh, also supports polyphony apparently, but we're not going to need it here for that. And I don't know, I was just a bit happier with um, uh, with the percussiveness of this one as opposed to this uh, low pass gate, but your mileage may vary. Anyways, I'm just gonna use two of them here, just duplicate them. What is a low pass gate? A low pass gate, usually what you would do uh, in modular synthesis or any synth, is you would um, clock uh, voltage controlled amplifier and a voltage controlled filter in order to shape the sound and uh, send an envelope into them. And often they would be fairly similar but not identical. You know on many synths you have a filter envelope and uh, amp envelope section, one to control the cutoff frequency of the filter and one to control the um, amplitude over time, uh, the volume effectively. And the special thing about the Buchler low pass gate is that it's both in one. Here you can see uh, there's three modes, just like on the easel, filter mode, VCA mode, and both, which basically lets you shape the sound with one envelope. And I think the effect that it has on the ear is that the sounds start more percussive with, with more harsher frequency content, and then as the envelope um, sinks down, you have less high frequency content, which sounds a bit more realistic if you think about um, how sounds behave, especially percussive sounds, in real life, uh, in terms of their frequency distribution over time. So I'm going to set both of, the, uh, both of them to both mode, so that it's actually a low pass gate. Then I'm going to set the speed to one as opposed to two or three, which makes it shorter. And now it's time to actually look for the envelope. Here again, <coughs> the exact same envelope as on the easel command but here it's also two of them. So uh, I don't have to find a workaround like on the easel command where I actually use the pulsar as uh, an additional uh, envelope in some instances. But now we can finally start to make sound if we start to wire this. I'm gonna put my oscillator here. So right now, starting from the pulsar, we're gonna create a little chain by first of all clocking the sequencers by going from the out to the trigger. And up next, we're going to trigger the envelopes. So now all of this should work in sync. And now we can use the sequencer signal, for example, only one of the many possibilities, to sequence the pitch of the oscillator by going into volt per octave and control the low pass gate with the envelope. Here I would usually close the low pass gate all the way to the left and then uh, here I have the amount for the incoming CV. Oh no, here. And now it's finally time to route audio. And maybe you notice I'm using the yellow cables here for control, CV, envelopes, all that kind of stuff. And then for actual audio signals, I'm gonna use red so that it's a bit more uh, easy to understand. So now, if I start the sequencer, we should hear the sound. Actually, the sequencer is very slow. Ah, I'm not in self-cycling mode. Um, right now, I'm setting the pulsar to self-cycling, so I don't have to uh, re-trigger it with MIDI notes, but rather have it be my clock. And now this is effectively our BPM control here. Yeah. Okay, that sounds kind of terrible, so let's first start by creating a more interesting patch. Usually, uh, when sequencing the Buchler, I start by putting all of them to the same value, selecting my lowest note, and then start finding additional notes that sound interesting by ear. Because here it's not about 12-tone equal temperament or quantized pitches, but you can use them if you like, but often I don't. 
So I just go by ear. You can also press command and this way while controlling the slider you have more fine control. Let's also bring up the tempo a bit. Yeah, now we basically already have a little techno loop. But now where's the wave folding? Unfortunately it's not included in the oscillator, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an additional module. I tried out various and my favorite was this one by Animated Circuits. So I'm going to place it right next to the oscillator, though it was a part of it. And now if I, instead of routing the sine wave directly into the low pass gate, it takes a little detour here into the wave folder. And now it's a proper Buchla complex oscillator because now I have wave folding. <coughs> or at least I should had I... Ah, yeah, I do. So now here it's important that you also put it into um, sine wave mode if you use it on a sine wave because otherwise it's gonna sound like it's distorted already because you already have a triangular wave. We could by the way also put it here on the scope now. Yeah so now we see kind of a saw, a uh, kind of a sine wavey thing but if I start folding it in on itself this is where we get the characteristic Buchla kind of sound. Yeah, lovely. And now we have a proper Buchla complex oscillator. And now we can basically just uh, duplicate this whole thing to build our modulation oscillator, which on my ESO command doesn't have wave folding, but in my VCV build it definitely has. So what most people would do with this is they would take something like a triangle wave and use it to modulate the first oscillator. And this is what it would sound like. Yeah, also sounds kind of booklery already. But what I actually prefer to do, which is something you couldn't do on the original music easel, but you could do on the easel command, is that you actually do it the other way around and you take the sound of the complex oscillator and modulate the modulation oscillator with it. And I'm just gonna wire it up to the sequencer real quick and the rest of the setup. So now it's get, it gets its own sequencer, which I also couldn't do on the easel command, the second one here. And it also gets its own envelope and its own low pass gate. And now we are already running into trouble here on the audio front because now we have one sitting mono at the left, one at the right. So this is why here I'm going to introduce a little mixer and assign an individual channel for both and then just put the mix output into the audio. And now I can control them individually and they are sitting in the middle actually. No, maybe let me sequence some things. And now introduce my favorite sound. Now the problem is it still doesn't really sound like the easel because one important thing is missing and that's the spring reverb. For that I'm using this module by B. Farco, I guess. And what I do is I basically put it behind the mixer in this case. You could wire it however you like, but right now it's the easiest thing to do. Put up the level here and then take the mix output 
put it into the master. And now we're pretty much there aesthetically speaking. Now, one important thing is missing, unfortunately, right now, and that is the randomness that's famous on the Buchla, which is effectively Buchla's way of sample and hold, where you uh, have some random signal like noise and use it as a control signal being sampled at various clocked steps in your sequence. And to achieve that, we could use uh, this module here. And it's so tiny, we could even use two. Um, and then what we would do is we clock it with the pulsar. And now we have a random signal that we can use to control all sorts of stuff, like for example, the wave folding, particular favorite of mine, on the main oscillator. And this is what it would sound like if we introduce some randomness. Uh -huh. See where I'm coming from? And I'm really so surprised because I couldn't achieve this with the Arturia plugin. And here I listen to it and in a blind test I wouldn't be able to tell that it's not my Buchla, I swear. Also another thing that you could do with the randomness is to control stuff like the envelope for example. So let's take another randomness and put it on your tag. Yeah, also very interesting. And here comes in a little difference from the easy command where we have to find another solution. Because right now I'm putting the randomness here into the Buchla and even though the attack is at zero, the randomness is using this entire space of the fader and how it would behave on the Buchla is actually if I put the fader here on maybe halfway position, the randomness would only be allowed to operate within this space, which is much more useful also and much more uh, gives you much more control. So unfortunately here I have to find a little workaround um, by using something like an attenuator. And there's, I think, two variants of this here. One is, one is this and one is this. And because they are going to be very useful, uh, I'm just going to put some of them here. Um, <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure you're going to make good use of them. And what they do is they take this um, CV signal and allow us to attenuate it, make it stronger, make it ne negative and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what I would do is I would uh, put it here maybe no to the noise to make it more easy to understand. And instead of going directly into the attack, I would um, first go into the attenuator, then go from the output into the attack. And now this knob will function like this uh, slider here should function. Yeah, now we have a randomness on the entire range of the fader. And now more in a subtle way, maybe like up here. And um, that's one of the limitations of many of these patches is that you have to manually use an attenuator basically because on the Buchla pretty much everything has an attenuator built in and on some things there's a plus minus switch to turn something into a negative and all that kind of stuff. But we can we can figure it out here using the attenuators like people on Eurorec are already used to. Um, and yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Another thing that you could do uh, that's maybe missing is um, noise. And I pretty much like this one. So now we could, um, could we do, could have another low pass gate just for the noise. I think violet noise is my favorite. Put it in here, then put it into the mixer on channel three. And it's, this one's gonna share an envelope actually, I think with the first one. And now we should have an additional noise kind of sound. Yeah, here on channel three. Yeah, lovely. All 
All right, and then I think uh, from now on you can basically just get creative and uh, apply all these techniques to uh, find new find new sounds. Uh, obviously, you could also use these attenuators, for example, um, for the sequencer signal, yeah, which is also something that the Buchla Easel command allows you to do. Um, where I'm going to put it here right now, where I would take the CV signal and instead of going into the Buchla directly, I would first go into this attenuator, allowing me to basically control the amount of this sequencer, which is going to create very interesting interplay between the different nodes. And it's another technique to get um, combinations of pitches that you would never come up with using a keyboard or 12 tone equal temperament. So if I would crank it up like this to 100%, it should not affect the signal. Yeah, we now have the original sequence. But when I lower it, the differences between these pitches are getting smaller and smaller. And this is also a key way of finding interesting harmonies and melodies on the Buchla, um, which is one of the reasons I like it so much. And obviously this is perfect for techno. With a setup like this, with a few more oscillators, uh, you can basically create 20 techno tracks in two hours. Uh, because you just have to dial in the sequencer for a moment and then uh, you get all sorts of interesting patterns, um, all of which sound very fresh uh, because especially for techno it sounds much more inspired than just working with the 12 notes that you find on a keyboard because we've heard them so many times already. All right, I guess that's it from my side for today. As usual, if you have any questions, hit me up. And uh, in this case, I'd also be super interested if you guys happen to make any music with this, uh, feel free to send it to me. Uh, would be super interesting uh, what you get out of this. And yeah, apart from that, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace out.